Alright, so today we're going to learn our final method okay, for solving quadratics. This me method is the quadratic formula. Okay, With the previous um, methods, there have been certain cases that we've wanted to use each. Okay, Whether that was graphing, square roots, factoring, or what we talked about yesterday, which was completing the square. Okay, Well, the reason why we save quadratic formula for last is because it works every time. Okay, so no matter what we're given, we can always use the quadratic formula. It's not always the easiest, but the thing is it just always works. So without fail, if for some reason we do not know which of the previous methods to apply, we can always uh, resort back to this. Okay, now the thing about the quadratic formula is that, okay, we have our standard form equation. We have a x squared plus b x plus c. Okay, this is I'll just write standard form. This is the form that we want in order to use the quadratic formula. Okay, and in order to use the quadratic formula, a, b, and c all have to be real numbers. Okay, all have to be real numbers such that such that a does not equal zero okay basically we have to have an x squared if a is zero then we do not have an x squared and therefore it's not a quadratic equation okay and if this is the case if we have a quadratic equation and it's in standard form the solutions solutions to the the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero are okay so, so the solutions to a standard form equation and it has to equal zero, okay? The only time we can use this is when it equals zero are x equals negative b or we'll say opposite b plus or minus the square root of v squared minus four ac all over two a. Okay? So that's the equation that always works. And this here, um, it's negative b, but the easier way to refer to it as is opposite b. Okay, so whatever b is, we'll take the opposite of that of that number. Okay. And a way to uh, remember this e uh, formula. This is the quadratic formula here. The way to remember it, there's a little song, kind of like Pop Goes the Weasel. It might be a little corny, but it's like x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, I got them vocals. Okay. But the reason why, just for uh, you guys that may be auditorial, auditorial learners, if you can um, some way make a song or a rap or just any sort of way for you to uh, rememorize this or to remember this, um, that would be good for you because um, you're going to have to just know this. This is something you have to know. Okay. So again, you can sing a song or if you can just, if you're a visual learner, just try to get a picture of what it looks like in your head. Okay. So this right here is a quadratic formula. Anytime we plug in these values, it will work. Okay? So, before we be begin to use it, we want to be able to analyze it. Alright? And the part that we're going to analyze is this part under the square root. Okay? And that part is called the discriminant. So, we're going to analyze the discriminant. OK, 
Okay. We're going to analyze the discriminant. Like I said, the discriminant is the part under the radical. So the discriminant equals, okay, D equals B squared minus 4AC, okay? D equals B squared minus 4AC, okay? So when working with quadratics, we have three cases, all right, three possible cases. We have the case where we have two solutions, okay? We have two real solutions. Two real solutions, all right? And we can know right off the bat whether or not we have two real solutions if the determinant is greater than zero, okay? So if we solve for b squared minus 4ac, and if that's greater than zero, we'll know that we have two uh, real solutions, or two zeros. Okay. We also have the case, we, we have one real solution. Okay, where it just touches the x-axis once, right? It just has one x-intercept, a one zero. And this is the case where our determinant equals zero, okay? That just the part under the radical equals zero, okay? And that's one real solution. Okay, and the third case is when we have two imaginary solutions. And that's where it never touches the x-axis, okay? It doesn't have any zeros or x-intercepts. Hence why we have two imaginary solutions. Okay, and that's one, a determinant is less than zero, or the, our determinant is negative. And if you see we have that square root, if we have a negative under square root, we should know we're going to get imaginary numbers. Okay, so these are the three uh, cases that we'll see. So whenever we begin to work these, which is in a couple of seconds or a minute, we are going to first analyze the, the determinant, I mean the discriminant. When we analyze the discriminant, we'll, we sh we'll have an idea of what type of answers we should get. So by the time we finish, we'll know whether or not we're on the right track. Okay? So now, let's begin to work some of these uh some of these problems. All right, let's begin to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so example one. All right. We will have x squared minus, sorry, 6x plus 4 equals 0, okay? x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 0, okay? So what is our A here? A is 1. What is our B? Negative 6. That's a 6. You're, you're fine. Negative 6. And what's our C? Okay, so our C is 4. Alright. So, knowing what our coefficients are, we now have to uh, make sure we know the quadratic formula. So what's the quadratic formula again? You can sing it or just tell me. X equals opposite B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
I know, it's beautiful. Okay. So, yeah. So this is what we're going to plug in. So all we're going to do is <coughs> we're going to begin to substitute our values <coughs> into this equation. So what is opposite B? 6. So x equals 6 plus or minus the square root. And it's negative 6 squared minus 4 times what's, what's uh, A? 1. C is 4. Okay. And then we have it all over 2 times A. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is, is calculate the discriminant. Okay. So somebody do that and tell me what it is. What's the discriminant? What's the part under the radical? Two? No, no, the part under the radical. That's the uh, discriminant. You said 36, is that, yes, 36 minus 16 is 20, okay? So we have 20 under the radical. Which, what type of solution should we get if we have 20 under the radical? Is 20 greater than 0, equal to 0, less than 0? Okay, it's greater than 0. So we sh this example is an example of two real solutions. Okay. This example is one of two real solutions because our determinant, our D, is greater than 0. And we know if that's the case, there will be two real solutions. So now all we have to do... We found the hardest part, the discriminant. Now we have to just simplify this, okay? So is there a square root of 20? No. Can we simplify this 20? We can do factor tree. Okay, so if we go scratch work over here, what are the factors of 20 that y'all want to use? Okay, 2, 10, 2, and 5. Do we have a pair? So we can... Factor out this pair, okay? Take the square root. So we get 6 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5 all over 2, okay? So now what do we want to do? Can we divide this 6 and this radical by 2? Yes. Technically, this is an answer right here, okay? This is the answer, but to receive... Or to fully simplify the problem, we want to divide by 2 here. So that is going to equal, what's 6 divided by 2? 3 plus or minus 2 divided by 2. So 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay. And this plus or minus, it's kind of like when we took the square root before, we had a plus or minus. Well, here we have a plus or minus because we have two answers. So your answer is 3 plus the square root of 5 and 3 minus the square root of 5. Those would be your two x-intercepts or your two zeros. Okay? So that's... So all it is is basically calculation. That's why some people... Um, this is probably the most frequently used besides factoring. Yeah, it's because it always works. You just plug it in. The only time it becomes a little messy is when you start dealing with fractions. And you just got to make sure you calculate all the all the numbers correctly. Okay? Does this make sense? Alright. So now let's start another example. Let's look at the equation. Um, negative 9x squared equals 30x plus 24. Wait, 25. Sorry. All right.
first question is to ask ourselves, is this in standard form? Does it, does it equal zero? No, so we got to set it equal to zero, so we should move what over? Yeah, let's move the negative nine over. So if you move it over, this should give you, okay, if you add nine x to both sides, you'll get nine x squared plus 30 x plus 25 equal to zero, okay? You'll get all of that on one side, so all of that will equal zero. So now we have our a, our b, and our c, all right? So what's our a value? Nine, what's our b? 30, and what's our c? 25, okay? Those are, that's our a, our b, and our c. So now, we're gonna plug this in to the quadratic formula, okay? Quadra quadratic formula is x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Y'all are probably getting tired of me saying that. Yeah, they're probably like, what is this guy doing? Okay, so now that we have this, what is the next step? Yeah, but before that, we have to do what? Yeah, you gotta plug in the values, okay? So what's opposite B? Negative 30, okay? Plus or minus the square root of 30 squared minus 4AC, which is 4 times 9 times 25, and all of that is over 2 times 9. Okay, so now let's uh, solve what's under the radical first. Let's find out what our discriminant is. All right, so somebody go ahead. It's zero. Okay. So what's thirty squared? What was thirty squared? Nine hundred, and then uh, nine times twenty-five times four was nine hundred as well. Okay. So under the radical, you get nine hundred times minus nine hundred. Okay. When you do 30, 30 squared minus uh, 4 times 9 times 25, you get 900 minus 900. So our discriminant, what's under the, yes, what's under the radical is equal to 0. So since it's equal to 0, we know that we're going to get one real solution. So this here is an example of one real solution. Okay. This is an example of one real solution. So now we just have to simplify. So we said we have the square root of zero, okay? So we have plus or minus negative 30 over, and what's two times nine? 18, okay? What's the square root of zero? Zero. So what's plus or minus, what's negative 30 plus or minus zero? Yeah, so it's negative 30. So x equals negative 30 over 18. Okay, can we simplify this fraction? Okay. Okay, what are you factoring out? 6. Yeah, they both have a factor of 6, so we can take out 6 over 6, which gives us negative 5 over 3. And that is our answer. We only have one, okay? Hence why this is an example of one real solution, okay? And it's always good to find a discriminant first. One, because it's usually the hardest. It usually involves the most calculation. And two, because it lets you know when you find the end result what answer you should have, okay? So this was an example of one real solution. How do y'all feel about this one? This is probably your favorite method, okay? And the thing is, this one will always work, okay? This one will always work. So now, I mean, we've done two examples, right? What do you guys think this thir third example is gonna be an example of? 
Yeah, that would be a safe safe bet. So now the last equation is five x minus seven x squared equals three x plus four. Okay. So is this in standard form? Is it set equal to zero? Do y'all want to set it equal to zero? Yes. What two do you want to move over? Yeah, the 5x and the 7x squared. We want to keep that x squared positive when we can. Now, it technically does not matter, but sometimes it's easier just working with the positive a. Okay? So now, you plus 7x squared to both sides minus 5x to both sides. Okay? So now, our equation should be 7x squared and 3x minus 5x is negative 2x plus 4 equals 0. Okay? So is it now in, in standard form? Is it set equal to 0? Yes. So now, what is our a value? 7. What's our b value? Negative 2. What's our c value? 4. Okay, so now should have an idea of what it's going to look like. All right. Okay, so x is going to equal our equation. Now we just have to fill it in. So what's opposite b? Two, okay. Plus or minus b squared. What's b? Negative two. A. It's times four ac. So what's a? Seven. C is four, and an a again is seven. Okay. So now let's first analyze the discriminant. Okay. So what? is the calculation of what's underneath the radical. Negative 116. So it's 4 minus what is 4 times 7 times 4? Okay, so 4 minus you said what? 112. Okay, so the calculation under the radical is the square root of negative what? What did you say, Flavio? 160? 16. Okay. 116. Okay. So, what does that mean? What does that tell us? Yes. Imaginary. Question. You said this was 4, right? Okay. Well, what's positive 4 minus 112? You can use your calculator. What's positive 4 minus 112? Yeah, 108. Okay. If that 4 was negative, then it would have been 116. But this here the radical is negative 108. Okay, and since this is negative, we know that this is an example of two imaginary solutions. Okay, and then we just have the 2 out in front, and then 2 times 7 is 14. Okay. So what do you guys think we should do? How should we complete this? Or f solve for x.
can we take the square root of negative 108? No, there's no perfect square. So what th what can we do? What can we try to do? To it? Yeah. Yeah, simplify it, okay? So we can use the factor tree method. Okay. All right. So can we go ahead and just take care of this negative right now? Yeah, we can uh, take the square root of negative 1 and write it as i. So let's go ahead and do that. That way we can just do the factor, tr factor tree of um, the square root of 108. So if you take care of that negative, okay, that negative comes out, and we get 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 108, all over 14. So now when we factor 108, how do you guys want to break it down? 6, what's 108 divided by 6? 18. You usually want to do prime numbers, but what can we divide the um, 6 into? 2 and 3. Okay. So you have 2 and 3. And then how do y'all want to... 2 and 9. And now what? How do y'all want to... Okay, so do we have any pairs? How many?